You want to beat the control? Do the math. Um, I'm recording this actually taking a break from working on a client project. And uh, this particular client project is actually a, a promo that I wrote before that has been, um, it's it's been tiring a little bit as far as its control status. So I I wrote it, we ran it, it made the client a bunch of money, made me a bunch of royalties, but now the performance has dropped off a bit. Now, it's an investment promo, so a lot has changed in the market uh, over the last few months, and this was written more than a year ago, and so so you can expect it's, of course, the performance is going to change, but also just the pure nature of, of this being a back-end promo, meaning it's going out to their internal audience, their internal list, uh, it's, it is something where the the effectiveness is going to wane over time because because people have seen it before and so oftentimes what you can do is you can get a lot more profits uh, generated or a lot more sales generated from largely the same work by reworking a bit uh, putting a new intro on it a new headline new lead and um, and and getting the attention of your audience in a brand new way leading through most of the same sales message so what does doing the math have to do with it? This is actually not like marketing math or conversion rates or anything like that. This uh, do do the math here refers to my experience. And and if you write investment promos, maybe you'll have like a direct one-to-one -one correlation with my experience. Uh, but even if you don't write investment promos, this, this idea of doing the math is an example that should be able to generalize to uh, research in general. So this particular promo is about an oil stock. And I'm looking at my other monitor here and looking at a spreadsheet that I have. And I, I don't want to share this spreadsheet. Um, but what I did is, is I recognized that in order to beat the control, having even just one particular stat that jumps out in a really interesting way can be just exactly what you need to pull people in. And so like this is about an oil company that's discovered a, a very large um, a large oil field that really had not been developed before. And so I have things like the number of barrels per oil, price per barrel, the shares outstanding of the company, the market cap, the value of the oil as calculated by the barrels of oil times price per barrel, the value per share, of that oil, so the total value in the ground, how much of that um, are you essentially buying for every share that you buy? Um, and then and then uh, interesting stat was barrels per share. So this stock sells for less than a dollar right now. The, the per share uh, price in the markets is less than a dollar. But you're buying like you're buying like 40 barrels of oil for every share you buy, which to me, to me, like that jumped out as being really interesting. So you're buying for less than a dollar, you're buying more than 40 barrels per of oil. And you know, a barrel of oil is like 40 bucks. Okay, that's fascinating to me. So just doing math like that. Um, I figured out like the cost per barrel of oil based on share price, which it's less than a buck, right? Um, and, and, uh, and, and, and the price of oil right now is $40 per barrel. So like what's the share multiple to reach the oil value per share? So how much does the price of each share have to multiply to, uh, to have the price based on the, the actual oil in the ground, which is just a ridiculous percentage, a ridiculous, uh, multiplication. Um, and then like, all sorts of different stats based on uh, the value of other takeover deals in the area and um, and how to multiply out. Like if you put an initial stake and it matches the different takeover valuations versus the oil value, all of that, like how does all of that play out? And it's all the math that I did. And as a writer, you would think that like as a copywriter, my job is mostly writing. But um, as a writer looking for the most interesting angle and the most interesting way to present data. When I look at at this at, at, at all these numbers um, that represent what this company is doing, by doing all that math, I'm just looking for like the one or two numbers that are going to jump out and be the most shocking or surprising to me that represent like how big the opportunity is for this company. And by being willing to do the math that other people, even people like at that company aren't doing, by being willing to do that math and to find those numbers, I'm finding like a new and unique and interesting 
angle, a new and unique, interesting proof point that makes my um, that makes my copy all the more compelling. And when you talk to copywriters who are really great at beating controls, at, at coming up with new angles, of new messages that move the market in ways that, um, that, that the market hasn't been moved before, what you'll find is that they are more obsessed with this research part of the process and like finding the really exciting research, like it could be a proof point, credibility element, anything to make your message more believable, or it could be in the mechanisms um, in, in terms of like helping them, un helping your market understand uh, the problem and how it's been underexploited or the opportunity, the, um, uh, the, the new solution that you've put out there, like that, that level of research that goes into great control beating copy as represented here in this particular situation by my willingness to do the math. Like that level of research is largely what differentiates a really, really good copywriter versus um, just the choice of words. Like anybody can pick up a book like the old uh, Capel's books or Schwab books or or whatever and, and pick up these books that have all the right words in them. But if those words are not built around substance, like proof elements, credibility elements, believability elements, uh, interesting facts, those things, if your words are not built around that, you can have all the flowery, uh, all the flowery language that you, uh, that you could ever come up with. And that flowery language isn't going to move the markets because there's no like substance to hang it on. On the other hand, if your message is based on incredibly compelling substance, you actually don't need fancy language at all. You just tell the story. Now you want to tell it in as compelling of a way as possible. But if you just have to tell the story in the right way, and uh, and and it really just um, it, it captures the market because you've done the math, because you've done your homework, because you've done the research, because you're actually saying something important as opposed to just saying fancy things. And so um, if you really want to be able to beat the control, if you really want to be able to write advertising that consistently generates profits for yourself, for your clients, you really need to embrace this process, not of writing fancy words, but of like finding the important things to say. And if you do that, if you do that, then like anything that you would do in terms of writing better um, is going to be much more effective for, for you as a copywriter. What do you think? Like what percentage of time do you spend actually doing the research, doing the math, doing whatever it takes to come up with the right angles, the right claims? How much do you dig into proof, credibility, and believability? And I actually have a training on the 26 different types of proof, credibility, and believability um, that you can use as a copywriter. How much time do you spend on those things versus how much time do you spend trying to like write poetically? Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know start the conversation there. You can also click like on this video to get more content like this and to have uh, to make sure that the magical algorithms of the internet are sharing it with more people like you. You can also share it yourself with other people who might find it valuable, maybe copywriters that you know, people on your marketing team. And uh, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure that you follow me here. You can also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com to get my daily emails Monday through Friday covering marketing, copywriting, business building, direct response, and more. My name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I hope you've gotten a lot of control beating value out of this idea, and I hope that you actually do run with it and, and spend more time engaging in the research and digging up in, in, interesting proof points and finding the best way to, to uh, present them because that's what's going to get you even bigger, better results with your marketing. So again, my name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets, and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.